new information comes out almost every day about how the former president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, utilized the Department of Justice as basically his personal hit squad, his personal legal counsel, in ways that you are not supposed to use the DOJ. So new information just came out that Trump, because of an SNL skit, okay? Because of an SNL skit, he wanted to start targeting individuals that made jokes about him. He wanted to target late night talk show hosts that made fun of him and I guess bruised his ego. Well, Jimmy Kimmel had a blast with this new information about former President Trump. Kimmel said Donald Trump wanted to turn the Department of Justice into a goon squad following a report that claims the former president wanted to investigate the late night comedy show. It's truly incredible that shows like Saturday Night Live, not funny, no talent, this is what Trump said, can spend all of their time knocking the same person, me, over and over without so much of a mention of the other side. Trump tweeted long before he was banned from Twitter for inspiring a violent mob. He also said, like an advertisement without consequences, same with late night shows, should Federal Election Commission and or FCC Look into this, his response from Tuesday (laughs) was, and I quote, the story that I asked the DOJ to go after ratings challenge without Trump, Saturday Night Live and other late night losers is total fake news. Anytime Donald Trump says it's fake news, it's real news, 100% of the time, no exceptions. If he says it is, it is not. If he says it is not, it is. That's the code of Donald J. Trump. Um, Here's some of this Jimmy Kimmel. According to two people familiar with the matter, Trump asked advisors and lawyers in early 2019 about what the Federal Communications Commission, the court systems, and most confusingly to some Trump lieutenants, the Department of Justice could do to (laughs) probe or mitigate SNL, Jimmy Kimmel, and other late night comedy (laughs) mischief makers. Can you imagine that? President Snowflake asked to send the authorities in to stop us from making fun of them. To those who heard it, Trump's inquiries into what federal regulations could be used to bust the likes of Kimmel and SNL was more of a nuisance than a constitutional crisis. To me, it feels more like a crisis than a nuisance, I don't know. Little did I know, I'm up here goofing on him. He's asking the feds to do who the hell knows what. And when he was told there was no legal case to be made that you can't Stop comedians from making fun of you when you're president. (laughs) Trump asked, can something else be done about it? Basically, Trump wanted to turn the Department of Justice into, remember on the old Batman show, uh, the penguin had those henchmen (laughs) and the the bowler hats and the tight black shirts. This is what Trump wanted, a goon squad, a bunch of tough guys to rough people up because he can't take a joke. We can laugh about it today, but we now know that Trump put members of Congress under investigation, members of Congress's family under investigation, their staff under investigation, and they were part of the Intelligence Committee. He put these individuals under federal investigation, obtained, his Justice Department obtained a warrant to put them under surveillance. That's what actually happened. Now remember, he was the guy claiming that Obama put him under surveillance. Once again, if he says it is, it is not. If he says it is not, it is. And how can you not make fun of a guy that gave you this many laughs? Our army manned the airport, it ran the ramparts, it took over the airports, it did everything it had to do. We've ended the war on beautiful clean coal and it's just been announced that a second brand new coal mine where they're going to take out clean coal, meaning they're taking out coal, they're gonna clean it, is opening. This is an island surrounded by water, big water, ocean water. If you have a windmill anywhere near your house, congratulations, your house just went down 75% in value. And they say the noise causes cancer. You tell me that one, okay? (laughs) You know, the thing makes it so... Brand new F-35s, fighter jets, 
They're stealth. You can't see them. I said, how good are these? They say, well, sir, the problem is you can't see them when you fight them. I said, that sounds like it's a big advantage. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds it sounds interesting to me. This man ran the presidency like somebody's drunk uncle. Every time he talked, it was as if he was just talking to people in his family that they understand he's touched. And he just continued to talk. Um, Brett? <laughs> like, li listen, the, I keep thinking of what I thought of Biden before he was president and before he ran against Trump. And I would cringe every time that guy would open his mouth. This is a guy who previously had done such amazing things as, this is Biden, by the way. Um, he said horrible stuff like, you know, he said as a joke to a South Asian man, you cannot go into a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. He also said um, to a paralyzed guy, stand up, we'll I'll clap for you at a press conference. Like everything mm -hmm. from just like horrible, like, bad racist stuff that he's trying to think is like folksy to like thoroughly cringy moments. And amid the backdrop of Trump, I was like, I'm going with the Biden thing. I'd rather have that <laughs> because at least Biden like yeah. locks into here is a policy discussion and can get through the sentences there. Um, that's where he still has his faculties in my opinion. But with Trump, like those moments are horrible. And, and that is, you pointed out exactly right. Like this guy is denying essentially that SNL should be able to make fun of him when he just gives them material to just quote back with in with Alec Baldwin saying the same words, and and it triggers him. And the other thing I don't understand is how this dude is supposed to be revered by the right as this giant alpha male. Who they paint with like abs and Rambo bandanas and huge machine guns. And he freaks out, as you read before, he freaks out at people calling him a snowflake in the manner of a total snowflake. He freaks right. out about like who's better at doing impressions of him. He like wants to go back to the days of Daryl Hammond. And and he loves, and the thing is, he says such terrible stuff about uh getting made fun of. When you know that at the same time he hates it because it's making fun of him, he loves the attention and that's what he misses probably more than being president. Yeah, and these ideas that we are seeing now, things that are being exposed, these ideas would have become law. These ideas would have been implemented into executive strategy, okay, if he was reelected. And it should sober us to the reality that democracy is actually very fragile. Okay, and it's so fragile, we're still fighting for our democracy. They have figured out a new way to do it. So instead of winning votes, they're now saying who can and cannot vote. They, instead of saying, let's count all the votes, they're saying, no, let's pick the vote counter. Because votes are important, but who counts the vote is important too. And they are now trying to get people in key positions who count these ballots and who make these rules and passing state laws that can overturn an actual election. That is their new strategy moving forward.